Welcome back to Niners Nation. We are just around the corner from the 49ers Sunday matchup against the Atlanta Falcons in the 2013 NFC Championship game. Uh, the winner advances on to Super Bowl 47 to face the winner of the New England Patriots and the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, plenty of storylines heading into this weekend and we wanted to take a look at really five of the key matchups, issues that, that really could impact the outcome of this game. Uh, the first one of course really just, and it shouldn't surprise anybody, revolves around Colin Kaepernick. Uh, he had a monster game against the Packers, continuing to break out as the 49ers' new starting quarterback. Against the Packers, he threw for 263 yards and two touchdowns, and also rushed for a uh, record-setting 181 yards and two touchdowns. The big question is whether or not the Atlanta Falcons will keep in a linebacker or safety to spy him. Maybe we'll see Sean Witherspoon or William Moore kind of keeping an eye on him. They didn't do that so much against the Seahawks, and Russell Wilson had a pretty solid game rushing for 60 yards. Of course, the Falcons did shut down Marshawn Lynch, so that is something to keep in mind. If they do keep a spy in, that opens up uh, other areas of the field, and the key for Kaepernick will be to take advantage of that. I think the 49ers are going to, you know, they're, they're going to mix up the game plan a little bit. You're not going to see as much of the keeping by Colin Kaepernick. You know, obviously, he will run, but I don't think it will be anywhere near what we saw against the Packers. I think you could see a bit more of a traditional run, run up the gut sort of sort of performance from Frank Gore. So that will be the uh, really a key key matchup to watch. Of course, where there's Kaepernick, there is Crabtree. Uh, Michael Crabtree has been Kaepernick's go-to guy for the last eight games, approximately. And the big matchup for him will be against Asante Samuel or potentially Dunta Robinson, depending on how the Falcons decide to match them up. Uh, if he does face off against Samuel, this actually could benefit Crabtree. As Samuel is a, a very aggressive player looking to get that pick. He had five interceptions and 19 pass deflections on the season. And I think with Crabtree, a guy who was fourth in the NFL in yards after the catch, uh, he's a guy that, you know, they, they, they're getting the ball relatively quickly. He's not a guy that's going to run a lot of go routes. And so that actually could benefit him where if you get Samuel trying to jump the route, you'll see Crabtree get the ball, maybe get a lot of yak out of that. Um, and also, it's really going to be interesting to see how how the Falcons potentially shade a guy over, potentially double Crabtree. When you're running a lot of short routes like Crabtree does, not so easy to double team him. Uh, you're going to have to get physical on the line with him, which opens the door, obviously, for guys like Vernon Davis, Randy Moss, Delaney Walker, the running backs. Uh, then you've got the 49ers front seven or six, you know, when they're in the nickel defense, taking on Michael Turner and Jack Lewis Rogers. I would argue that the Falcons' best chance of winning comes in this matchup. Uh, with Michael Turner and Jack Lewis Rogers, you've got guys that have a lot of talent but have been inconsistent this year. Uh, against the Seattle Seahawks, they had a strong performance combining for 162 yards on 24 carries. That's 6.7 yards a carry. And Michael Turner has actually, uh, seven of his 10 touchdowns came in the red zone. The 49ers red zone defense has been a little questionable at times, so that's something to keep an eye out for. Uh, while Turner and Rodgers were incredibly strong last week against the Seahawks, before that they really hadn't done a whole lot in the previous few weeks. So the 49ers defense is going to kind of have to maintain their discipline, keep Rodgers inside the tackles as much as possible, uh, not let, you know, really take down Turner. they got to keep their fundamentals. They've got to tackle Turner. They can't let him bounce off tackles and get into that second level. That's what you need against the Seahawks and really just had a monster day because of that. Fortunately, the 49ers are fundamentally sound defense and should be able to contain Michael Turner. Uh, the other matchup to watch on the defensive side is Patrick Willis against uh, Falcons All-World Hall of Fame tight end Tony Gonzalez. Uh, fortunately for the 49ers, uh, Football Outsiders ranks them 7th in the NFL uh, defending the tight end. Uh, of course, Tony Gonzalez is not your average tight end. He is just keeps on plugging away, still looking strong, and really... He's become sort of a you know sort of a safety blanket, but for Matt Ryan. But of course, when you've got Julio Jones and Roddy White as well, it opens up all sorts of opportunities. And Gonzalez is just is just keeps on plugging away. So what will be interesting is uh, where he is lining up. Uh, they use him extensively in in the slot and and split out a bit. 
But when he lines up on the line, Dante Whitner was saying that when he's on the line, usually the team, if they're running the ball, is going to be running away from him um, as he is not quite the blocker he may have once been. And so that is something where you'll see the 49ers adjust depending on where Tony Gonzalez is lining up. Finally, I wanted to take a look at some intangibles. Uh, the 49ers are returning to the NFC Championship game for the second time in as many years. Uh, they're coming off last year's heartbreaking loss to the Giants. I think, you know, from what we've heard, this team has really learned from that, and hopefully they're, they're able to use that as motivation. Uh, we've heard Justin Smith say the team is definitely much more even-keeled this time going into the game, so that could prove key. Uh, Colin Kaepernick's receiving a lot of media attention. That That's always a worry with young players, but... I think just the, if, if you watch his press conferences and realize how boring they are, which I actually think is a good thing in this regard, I think it, you know, it shows that he's level-headed, it shows that he's focused on football, he's really bought, in, bought into Jim Harbaugh's system, both on the field and with the media. And of course there's always the concern about the 49ers being a favorite. Uh, the 49ers enter the game as a four and a half point favorite. They haven't exactly done well in those situations uh, in, in big matchups like this where they're the favorite. But again, playoffs are, you know, the proverbial whole new the whole new ball of wax. They're everybody's winless at that point. And so I th again, I, I think they can overcome it, but it's one of those things where with that win-win loss pattern we've seen where they win two, lose one, or tie as the case may be, I think some fans are just waiting to see, okay, are they actually going to get over it? So I think they will, but, you know, it's, we'll see. You can't measure it. It's intangible. Uh, as for a final prediction, I got I to gotta go with the 49ers. I'm going to go with 31-21. I think this turns into a bit of a shootout. Uh, I think both defenses will have their moments, but I think this is more of an offensive game. I think it's going to be close early on, but... 49ers are going to pull away, and when they turn into a, when they turn, are able to turn into a one-dimensional game, that will be the key to, to putting away the Falcons. Shut down that run game, force Ryan to make some desperate throws. So we'll see how it plays out, and we'll be back with a recap and hopefully some Super Bowl content.